Hey there, how you doing? Tim Warner here. In this brief lesson, I'd like to teach you the gotchas and workarounds for working with default network security group rules in Microsoft Azure. Let's take a look at some architectural diagrams that I've pulled from the Azure Architecture Center. You can see the attribution URL in the lower left corner of the diagram. First, let's take a look at a virtual machine or perhaps multiple virtual machines running in a single virtual network. How do you use network security group rules to shape traffic within a virtual network? What governs the ingress and egress? Well, of course, it's network security group rules. How do you control traffic between an on-premises network? Like in this diagram, we're using ExpressRoute, but we also just as well could be using a site-to-site -site VPN. NSG rules come to the rescue for our Azure VMs again. And then lastly, if we have, for instance, a hub and spoke virtual network architecture, how can we govern traffic inbound and outbound between and among these virtual networks? Yes, it comes down to the NSG. And we have three inbound and three outbound Microsoft provided default rules that I want to make sure you're clear on. Two other types of traffic I want to discuss that are certainly on the menu for understanding security with NSGs are Azure Load Balancer or Application Gateway Traffic. You may know that these resources rely upon health probes to make sure that the backend pool members in this example, three identical VMs, are online. And if a certain number of health probes fail, the network load balancer understands it should take that VM temporarily out of rotation. Well, those health probes are network traffic, of course, and we have to take that into account with our network security group rules. And lastly, there's the important and controversial question of internet access. Are you interested in supporting outbound internet access for your Azure virtual machines? Now let's hop into a demo, and I'll take this theory and put it into practical application. Here we are in the Azure portal looking at a Windows Server 2019 virtual machine I have called Win1. We can go to the networking blade to take a look at what's happening with regard to TCP IP configuration on this machine. We can see the network interface. We can see that this virtual machine does not have a public IP, which is a good security practice. Of course, we have a private IP that comes from the virtual network and subnet on which this VM's network interface is attached. And then we have a network security group called Win1 that looks like is attached not to the subnet, but in this example, it's attached directly to the virtual machine's virtual network interface. That's fine. Let's go take a look at this network security group and see how it's set up. If we go under settings, inbound security rules, it looks like this is a plain vanilla rule set. These are the three default rules that Microsoft provides us. If we go to outbound, it looks like, again, it's plain vanilla, the standard rules. Now, here's the gotcha. At one time, I thought that if you toggled this default rules button up here, that would remove the default rules and then free me up to create as many of my own custom rules as I want. Well, guess what the truth of the matter is? These default rules are always in play. If you open the ellipsis menu, you'll notice that the delete operation is prohibited. All this I does with the line through it is hide the rules from your view to make it easier for you to focus on your work. That is just the nature of this particular beast. And I can back this assertion up by checking the Azure documentation, specifically this article called Create, Change, or Delete a Network Security Group. If you scroll down about a third of the page, you can see this important sentence right here. We cannot delete default security rules, but we can override them with rules that have a higher priority. That is the gotcha. So given that, it's crucial that A, you understand the implication of the default inbound and outbound rules, and you build your own custom rules to override them where necessary. Now, if you don't know anything about service tags, let me give you a quick education. We see this rule 65,000 called allow VNet inbound that says any inbound traffic on any port or protocol coming from the source virtual network and headed to the destination virtual network allow. Virtual network is an example of an Azure service tag. The relevant docs article here is called virtual network service tag. And I'm going to walk you through it. This is a good doc that if you scroll down, it explains what each one means. A service tag is simply a Microsoft provided label that you can use to reference an entire range of Microsoft owned or perhaps non-Microsoft owned IP addresses. Specifically, the built-in virtual network service tag embraces all of your virtual network infrastructure. In fact, for that matter, let's head on over and look it up so we can read it right from the documentation. Here we go. 
The documentation says that the virtual network service tag is the virtual network address space. All IP address ranges defined for your virtual networks, all connected on-premises address spaces, peered VNets, virtual networks connected to a VNet gateway, virtual IP address of the host. That refers to the Microsoft virtual IPs, like for the Azure provided DNS service, etc., the 168.63.129.16 and, and the other one there. And then we have address prefixes used on user-defined route tables, and it says this tag might also contain default routes. This rule is what allows your virtual machines by default to communicate with each other within a virtual network, between virtual networks, and in a hybrid cloud environment. Second, we have this allow Azure load balancer rule, and that's saying any port, any protocol from the Azure load balancer service tag. That's going to be the range of IP addresses that correspond to the Azure load balancer service. And the destination here is not virtual network, but actually any, which seems a little bit broad for my liking. And then third, we have deny all inbound, which is an important rule to have, period. This makes sure that any preceding traffic that doesn't match any preceding rules with a higher priority value, that the NSG will ensure to deny that traffic. And that also pertains to outbound security rules. The default rules are we have allow VNet outbound that allows any port, any protocol to or from the virtual network space. We have, this is a controversial one, allow internet outbound, any source that goes to the internet service tag. The internet service tag corresponds all of the public IP address space that's not owned by Microsoft. And then we have a deny all inbound. You see what we got? Cool. So what we're going to do is a proof of concept here is let's modify the outbound security rules for this NSG to A, block internet traffic, and B, we'll create our own denial, but we're going to set the priority higher than these defaults. Given that we can never get rid of these default rules, our only choice is to create our own custom rules from soup to nuts, so to speak, making sure that they go into effect before these default ones ever come into play. So let's come back to my Win1 server. If I go to Overview, I've deployed an Azure Bastion managed appliance. You might be familiar with Azure Bastion. In fact, if you look in my YouTube channel, I've created at least one video on that subject. Let's click Connect, go to the Bastion tab. I'll put in my administrator credentials. What's beautiful about Azure Bastion as a managed jump host is the fact that our virtual machine does not have to have a public IP address and that we can create a secure tunnel using remote desktop gateway in a managed circumstance to be able to connect and manage the VM. At this time, at the time of this recording in mid-January 2020, the experience for RDP and SSH connections is limited to a browser. But from what I understand from the engineering team, eventually we'll be able to use our client applications to manage our servers. And the reason I'm taking us in here to this virtual machine's desktop is not just to show off Azure Bastion in passing, but also just as a demonstration, a proof of concept, that we do have internet connectivity here. For instance, we can click this link to head out to Amazon.com. Of course, the VM doesn't have a public IP. That would be used for internet-based inbound access. But you see, we certainly can get out to the internet because we're using those default network security rules. We're going to fix that right now. Let's again come back to the virtual machine's networking blade and let's select its network security group and we're going to modify our outbound security rules. Let's click add and this rule is going to, as its source, I will choose to use the virtual network which is going to cover not just this virtual machine but all my virtual machines. Source port range I'll leave it star or asterisk to denote all. The destination here, I'm going to choose service tag and make sure that internet is selected. The destination port range is going to be star to denote any with any protocol, and we're going to do a deny. Now, your priority rules, I always forget what the limit is for this. You can put in an intentionally really high value, and it'll tell you here. The priority number, you probably know this, but let me just repeat it for completeness. Lower integer values denote higher priorities. That is, if we create this rule with a priority of 100, that rule will be evaluated before any of the default rules. Another practice is to make sure you put plenty of bumper space in between your NSG rules. I'm going to name this rule Internet Deny. I'll click Add. 
And I'll also want to create my own catch-all rule such that no traffic winds up going to these three default ones. This is just like I said, a way that you can deal with what I perceive as the inflexibility of these default rules. So let's create a priority 200 rule that will say any source this time from any port range, any destination, and any port range on any protocol. We're going to deny that. I'll make it priority 200, and I'll call this black hole. Click add, and we've got ourselves some rules. Cool. This means we can come back to our virtual machine, and let me attempt to go, for instance, to Pluralsight.com. It's spinning and waiting. No, I'm just not going to get out there. It's just not going to happen. Let me try Google.com. We've got no path to Google, so that's the NSG doing its thing. Let's close out of our Bastion session, and let me show you how to use Network Watcher to do some additional troubleshooting. Let's search for Network Watcher and find it in the service list, and we'll use a tool called IP Flow Verify just to get a sanity check that we are blocking the traffic based on the network security group rule. So what we'll do is we'll dial up our appropriate resource group and virtual machine. It has its associated network interface. And let's try a TCP port 80 outbound connection. And the remote IP address, let's try to hit one of Google's DNS servers. And as expected, the access is denied. It tells us the security rule and the network security group that were responsible for that blockage. I hope you learned a lot in this lesson. It was a pleasure teaching you. Thanks so much for your time. You can contact me at Twitter. My handle is TechTrainerTim. My Microsoft Azure course is at Pluralsight. You can find those at timw.info forward slash ps. And my personal website is techtrainertim.com.